Hi there, welcome back. When I finished the last video, I said that all of the electronics work was done, and uh, somebody correctly pointed out in the comments that I'd forgotten the Bluetooth. And indeed, I had. In this video, I'm going to correct that. Now, one of the reasons this uh, restoration of the cabinet's taking so long is that I've got supplies problem. We are quarantined at home in Madeira, and we are now not allowed to even leave our municipality which means that when I need something, I can't go and get it in uh, Funchal. I live outside of Funchal in Caniso, so um, if I can't get the supplies in my local area, I'm stuffed, which is what's happened. Now, if you've been following my channel, you may remember a video I did on uh, designing the board for um, a uh, Bluetooth module. I'd been using a sort of rather homemade option and I decided to design a board using uh, EZDA and the result was a PC board that I then ordered and have been using since and it's been working great. It actually works very very well. There were a few things that I would have done differently and also following the uh, comments that I got on this thing I took some of the, the advice given in the comments and I've made a few tweaks to the board and I'll show you what it is that I've done. The idea of the board was that um, it would act as the power supply with a DC to DC isolator so we can get rid of any buzz when we use this in the radio. And then it was made so that one of these modules, and I chose this one in particular because it fits well. I designed the board to fit this particular module. As you can see, those pins over there match these and you end up with a working solution. And I've used this quite a lot. I'm actually almost running out of these, so I've ordered some more of these as well. They've uh, proven to work quite well, and I'm happy with the quality of the transmission. So this board has acted as the base for quite a few of the uh, Bluetooth modules that I've put into the recent tube radios I've restored. And I'm running out of them as well, and I decided before ordering, I'd make some changes. And I'm going to build this and we'll see what some of the drawbacks are here. And then you can see why I've made some of the changes. Let me go ahead and show you. Putting this thing together is not difficult. It's actually quite easy. But uh, I'm going to start putting them in and show you where the drawbacks are. Okay, we've got the basics in here. And the first thing I realized was that I really didn't remember what some of these component values were. So um, <laughs> I decided that having the numbers of the components on the board was uh, absolutely useless. So I decided that instead of the numbers, I was going to use the component values themselves. So that's the one change. The other change I found was the spacing for these resistors is just a little bit too tight. So in the new one, I've given it a bit more width so we can fit the resistors a bit more, not more um, comfortably in there. The other thing was these capacitors are too close to this DC to DC converter. So in this case, I've got a 100 microfarad capacitor. It's just a little bit wide and it actually puts a bit of pressure on the converter and on that capacitor as well. So there was a little bit more space necessary on this uh, component here, both to the uh, left and right and top and bottom. Um, other than that, this thing didn't require that many changes. The one thing I did find was the actual pads is very, very small. So I've decided to widen them just a little bit more. You can do that on EZDA. And then, of course, there were the extra components that I put in. And that was I used a um, capacitor to couple the mono signal that comes out of these two resistors, after these two resistors, Couple that to the output with a, uh, a capacitor. It can be a 100 nanofarad, 200 nanofarad, thereabouts. So I left a space for the capacitor. And also I referenced that to ground so that there's no pop when uh, this thing comes in. The uh, actual pickup input goes to the volume pot. Obviously it creates a resistor to ground. But in case the coupling in there is slightly different, I gave this 100 kilo ohm ground reference. I also made the spacing for the uh, soldering of the 6.3 volt AC line 
just a little bit wider. This is too close together. If it shorts, it could be dramatic to your winding, your heater winding on the transformer. Obviously, this one is going to be built because I need this one for this particular radio. And then we'll test this. We'll actually transmit a signal from my uh, iPhone. I've got a signal generator function on the iPhone. And we can transmit a signal and see what comes out of this on the scope. The basic build is pretty simple. It's just uh, fitting and soldering. But um, the part that uh, I want to show you is to connect the two boards together, I use these... Uh, what do they call them? Like uh, spacer pins. You buy them in long lengths. I cut out uh, two sets of three. And on the one for the power, you've got to remove the center pin because I've left it with spacing two pins apart. And that makes a very nice connection so that you can connect the two boards together. Another bit of advice is when you put this in, Put the uh, connectors in loosely, just uh, solder one pin on there because uh, sometimes those the board at the top doesn't fit properly. So you've got to make sure that uh, you fit them together properly before you finally do the uh, complete soldering. So finally, when you set the board on top and uh, you solder it, just be careful you don't create any shorts. The tags are very close together there. And what you do is you solder one tag, push the board down flat. It actually lifts at the back where the antenna is, just by the height of the pins. And uh, you're pretty much good to go. It should be well settled and everything's connected and there's no wires and no mess, which is uh, really the idea over here. Nice and neat. To connect the power, I like to use these 3.5 millimeter jacks. It just makes it easier to add and remove and it uh, ends up with a pretty neat result. The male socket is then connected to the actual 6.3 volt uh, input to the board. And... Uh, all we need then is to add an audio cable to the output from the audio out. And I use a shielded cable for that, which then is going to go to the input of uh, your radio, the pickup input. Then I just solder the female to the one lamp, the dial lamp, which has 6.3 volts. And I've tied the uh, socket with a tie clip and we're done. Now I have the power connected in there, it's just the two jacks. The output is connected to the scope, which we'll see in a second. And if I push TA on the radio, I start supplying 6.3 volts, and there we go. Now it's looking for a Bluetooth device, which I need to sync. Now on the iPhone, if I activate Bluetooth, I see the new device down here, MH-M28, hit it, it's connected. Now all we need to do is uh, we need to send a, a signal from the iPhone via Bluetooth. And the way I do that is using the EE toolkit. It's got a frequency and it's got a function generator function in here. And there we have it on the scope. And I can reduce the volume. If I can do this without shaking the phone. There I reduce the volume on the on the phone itself. With the iPhone volume on max, we've got 917, 920 millivolts RMS. <laughs> you see what's happening here? I'm sending the sine wave and I'm recording at the same time. Now, when I record, <laughs> my audio, my voice is actually being sent as well. That's why you're getting all that vibration and modulation. <laughs> I just realized that. All right, I'll keep quiet. There we go. So there's our module. 
And you'd say, well, why don't you leave well enough alone and just settle on this model? Well, I would, but I'm a sucker for punishment, as you all know. And I want to correct those few little quirks that I don't like on the board. And I need to order more anyway, so I figured, well, why order something with uh, what I consider shortfall if I can redo it? And I did redo it. Let me show you. As far as the schematics concerned, the few changes I've made were as follows. I have left everything here exactly the same. So from the 6.3 volt AC input, it's all the same. I've just changed the spacing between those two pins to 5.08, just to give it a bit more space so we don't have shorts. Everything stays the same here, the same here, the same here. Now, the full description of this is in the video that I did on the design of this board, and uh, so I won't go into it again. But there's really, if I can just check, no differences here at all. The differences I did make were, I've got these two resistors which come from the left and right of the Bluetooth module. They become mono, they sum through the 1K resistor. There's a DC um, blocking capacitor, just in case there's a DC on your uh, input. It shouldn't be, but if there is, this was a suggestion on the comments, put in a cap here. This could be 100 nanofarad, it could actually be more. In fact, I like the idea of using, for example, a 1 microfarad. I've got some nice small 1 microfarads that I sometimes use. And 100k to ground just to make sure this thing is ground referenced. And then the mono goes out to the radio. Let's have a look at the board. The changes on the board were a little bit more pronounced. I just made sure that I had all the values on here as opposed to the component uh, numbers. And I also gave this more space. I moved that all a little bit up, this all here a little bit down so that I have more space around this capacitor, which was fitting quite tightly in there. I think uh, it'll be fine now. I did a bit of rerouting on here just to accommodate this change. As you can see, I've got the left coming on, along here to a 1K resistor. I've got the right signal coming along here to this 1K resistor. They sum, they go through that small capacitor, and then they go to 100K and out, and this one goes to ground, which is referenced back to ground. So effectively, the radio only sees this ground. The power ground is completely separate. And again, this is explained in the other video that I did. And therefore, you get no buzz, because this guy, this is the um, DC to DC converter, actually isolates the input from the output. And that's it. That's what we have. And the boards that I've ordered are these, except I made them black, which is the same as the, uh, the other one that I did. And that's what you see. That's the final result. And I found that um, it literally comes out looking exactly like this when you get the board. This is what the bottom side is. You don't see anything else. You'll also notice that I made all the um, pads just a little bit bigger, just to make it easier to solder. And I think the result is going to be my final version until I decide to do V3.0. There we go. Wrong color, but never mind. I haven't actually learned to use or haven't bothered to learn to use the full 3D function on this uh, software. You can get components that are in 3D and you see them mounted on the board, but this is the way it is. So, I've ordered these boards. I've, uh, they're in black, as I said. I've ordered about, I think I ordered 20 of them. And I've also decided, again, in response to some requests, I've decided to provide the, the Gerber files for this board. There's a link in the description below, and so you can actually order these boards exactly like this by just uh, copying the Gerber files and using them on the uh, JLC PCB uh, uh, website and in the order form, you can actually just provide the Gerbers and it does the business. So that's it. That's it for now. This one is still going to use the old boards, 
but the new ones will be a little bit more sophisticated and probably just a little bit easier to build, which is the idea. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click like, subscribe, share and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel, please do so on Patreon. These videos might be a little bit odd from now on because I've run out of some supplies to finish the Grundy um, cabinet. We'll see how long this crazy time goes on for. But um, yeah, we do our best. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.